Oh, it's me. That's right, I'm back. Might sound a little different, but I'm dealing with a little different recording setup right now. I know I'm a little bit late. It's Tuesday evening. You're used to getting these on Monday, but relax, sit back, and don't call the cops. I'm in my house recording this Batwoman Reviews in the place to be for all the yous. So what I want you to do right now is kick back and get ready to take a peek at episode 16, Through the Looking Glass, with me. Allison Cater talking, and Jacob is digging the grave for Mouse's dad. Alice really lays it on thick with the monologuing as she and Jacob are discussing the pursuit of Mouse, who Alice is very worried about. Jacob, of course, wants to arrest him. Then, of course, Alice makes Jacob look stupid as she lifts his gun without realizing it and holds he and Kate at bay with it so she can make her exit. As Batwoman is beating the shit out of a criminal, who is shockingly not a white male, she breaks one of his legs and smashes him onto a car windshield and proceeds to almost choke him to death. You can tell she's really overselling here because this guy could probably knock her out if he looked at her wrong in reality. Kate has to lie to Luke about Cartwright's death Cartwright. as he still thinks he's alive. Because Kate can't exactly tell him she strangled him to death like Wilford Brimley did Bob Crane in a hotel room. Alice goes back to her evil lair in hopes of being greeted by Mouse, or at the very least, her evil henchman from the Wonderland gang in the form of a psychopathic homecoming of sorts. But instead, she finds them all strewn across the floor. Some of them were caught with their limbs in what appear to be large bear traps. She's pretty pissed off and finds a conveniently placed note, Did you think I'd forget? from Coriana or Cartana. Because laying out a story and making it interesting takes clever writing. This way, all you've got to do is have aforementioned note in sight and it saves you from pesky storytelling. Why make the audience think when you can spoon feed them? Like your invalid grandma you keep in that room upstairs until it's time to hose her down in the yard and then put her back up there again. What the fuck is wrong with this guy in my head? Sophie are trying to locate the missing surveillance footage from the night Lucius Fox was murdered and in turn expose some dirty dealings within the Crow organization. If I was a betting man, say the real villain here, in all odds, probably the patriarchy. You get your bitch ass back in the kitchen and make me some pie. Kate's getting sauced at her bar in the middle of the day and having flashbacks about Cartwright. Cartwright? When Alice shows up asking for a favor, she needs Kate to help find Mouse. When Alice tells her that her entire gang was slaughtered, Kate of course agrees to help, but they have to do it her way. Alice says, considering that Kate's way included strangling someone to death until they choke on their own blood, she'd like nothing more. Again, I don't, I didn't realize, I wasn't sure, but I think this is about David Carradine. We then go to the parole hearing for the killer of Lucius Fox, or alleged killer, we should say, Reggie Harris. Luke and Mary are sitting next to each other, and it turns out that Harris was the inmate that saved Jacob Kane's life in prison. Oh, the delicious irony of it all. Sophie finds another murdered nurse when she's accosted by Julia Pennyworth who saves her from a sniper's bullet and makes her very hot return to the program and they discuss the fact that they know each other because they're both Kate's exes. And just between you and me, I think you know what time it is. The lesbian! <laughs> We rejoin Kate and Alice on the couch at the other nurse's house because Mouse is hunting these nurses down and supposedly killing them. As Mouse comes stumbling up and yelling, Nurse Jenny! Nurse Jenny! Almost reminiscent if Forrest and Jenny had gotten into some kinky role play before the AIDS baby was born. Okay, Jenny. And I'll mow the grass and raise the AIDS baby. The crows show up on the spot, arrest Mouse, with Jacob in the lead, of course. As Kate and Alice argue over who called the crows, Nurse Jenny walks in with a double barrel shotgun and says she called them. Kate and Alice wrestle the shotgun away from dollar store Kathy Bates, but not without 
a shot being fired before they make their escape. Kate and Alice are sitting there in the bar, rambling some bad dialogue. When in the middle of it, in tears, Alice offers a sincere thank you to Kate for killing the man who tortured her and destroyed their family. Ha! Gay! Kate says she only feels guilty for not feeling guilty, and they discuss the possibility that they're more alike than they thought. Kate agrees to help reunite Alice and Mouse, but no one dies in the process. Alice promises her that no one will die. Lynn and Truck pull up to the gates of the Arkham Asylum, and the driver is... Well... Listen here, Washy Washy, you do have my shirt. I know have your shirt. You yes have my shirt. You get out of my store. You give me shirt. You go, I call police. You no dare call police. Oh, you want to play game, fatso? And unbeknownst to him, the guards discover an explosive device underneath his truck. Alice's idea of a small distraction. Kate tells her that they better not have gotten that driver shot when they're inside and the alarm goes off. Arkham, well, Kate and Alice, and they get into the main hallway through, you guessed it, a ventilation shaft. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Kate beats the hell out of two guards, helps Alice out of the ventilation shaft. She beats these guards like way too easily. I mean, these are big guys. Alice and Kate go after the individual keys to free Mouse. Alice goes after Dr. Butler. Kate goes after the head guard because there's two keys and Kate reminds her, no killing anybody, Alice. Catching up Julia's gunshot wound at Mary's clinic because Apparently, everybody just walks in. There's no locks, no security, nothing. Sans Mary, she's not there. But because plot, Mary instantaneously shows up and starts assisting. And the fact that Julie and Sophie are Kate's exes, both of them, both very attractive, you know what that means. The lesbian! <laughs> we go back to Luke watching Reggie on the street as he's approaching his apartment with his mother. Luke walks up to him. They start out a bit aggressive, but Luke actually talks to him. Reggie kind of explains himself, and they kind of humanize him. He tells Luke that he didn't kill his father. Lucius talked about Luke in the store that night in the brief time that he and Reggie had an interaction. Reggie said he was knocked out. He woke up, the gun went in his hand. But just as Reggie's saying this, boom, shot in the heart. That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Alice on the hunt for Dr. Butler to retrieve the key to set Mouse free. She threatens to kill him, but keeps her promise to Kate and simply demands he forfeit his keys. Speaking of Kate, we join her. She Pearl Harbors another hapless 200-pound guard and dismantles him as if he were a small child. And she was Casey Anthony. Are you fucking high? The main guard, who's easily 230, 240 pounds, and easily beats five more guards with the slight assist from Alice's butterfly knife. And this scene was absolutely birds of prey bad. I mean, it was equally shite, which is horrible considering birds of prey had a hundred million dollar budget and this is Batwoman. It's fucked! Alice goes to unstrap Mouse from the chair after they've gotten into the cell. Kate locks Alice and Mouse in the cell together. Jacob enters and Alice freaks out and chews the scenery like a boss, having a meltdown as Kate and Jacob make their exit, leaving Alice and Mouse locked up together. So again, Kate betrays Alice despite their emotional moments and apparent uh, affinity for choking each other and fighting. Kate betrays her sister again. For shame, Batwoman, for shame. Okay, now to be fair. Uh, to be fair. 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 More scenes with Kate and Jacob in his office, and he's discussing how they have Alice in isolation, and he moved the body of Cartwright, so... Alice can't frame them anymore. Luke and Mary scene and some other stuff with Sophie. But then Jacob is walking through the parking lot. Sophie's on the phone with him. Somebody tries to kill him. Of course, Jacob shoots the guy and kills him before he can find out who hired this hitman who was obviously hired at a Dollar General. Kate at Wayne Enterprises says Kate is drinking on a ledge, literally, and we get more exposition because, again, creative storytelling is difficult. Julia comforts her, and then we get... That's right, that kiss between Kate and Julia. Let's end this on a high note, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. And here's the point where I give you my final thoughts on this episode. This show legitimately doesn't hold its viewers in the highest of regards because the level of exposition is astoundingly insulting, not only to my intelligence, 
but to the people who actually value quality storytelling and creative writing. Everything they wasted time explaining through worthless dialogue could have been fleshed out in that story with some real writing. That goes against everything that Berlanti and his minions conjure up in the writer's room full of monkeys throwing shit at the wall. Fight sequences were more insulting than the writing because I think they're running out of NFL linebackers for Kate to beat up. This was another miserable outing that was only saved in part by Rachel Scarston's acting and overacting and... The Lesbian! Let's face it, because if there's anything, and I mean anything, on earth that can save this show, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. That's it. That does it for me. There's where you can find us across social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Past podcast available, Anchor, iTunes, and Spotify. That's right. There's a bunch of places where you can get in touch with us over here at the Place to Be Reviews. And I'm going to put the podcast on hold the rest of the week so I have time to get healthy. Click that subscribe button. Join the Fandom Menace, a great community on YouTube and online. Hail the Fandom Menace. And thank you for joining me at the Place to Be Reviews. I'm Itepo Kuin, and if I don't see you, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. There's another video that's coming up next.